today we're going to fit the body on the Jeep again and start um, test fitting some other components like you know where the shocks can go, the front steering which is going to be rather complicated. We're going to look at like what kind of space we have for a radiator and a seat. Those are the main components that like currently don't exist and need to. Um, so throw the body on here and then also start thinking about how to mount the body. Right now it's just a truck. We could flatbed it. Yeah. sitting here staring at this and rearranging pieces for, you know, about half a day. I think I finally have a pretty solid idea of what to do for the steering. Um, we had ordered this cheap, crappy rack and pinion off of eBay to uh, see if that would work, and it could potentially fit somewhere in there, which wouldn't be bad, and even the steering column could align with it, and that's all great, but then it would be going the wrong direction. Everything in this thing goes the wrong direction. <laughs> and the reason for that is because we, to get the steering out front here, we had to swap the knuckles, and this rack and pinion is designed for a vehicle that has the steering uh, pivot at the back rather than the front. So then we'd need to flip it over, which would be fine, aside from there's an engine in the way. Probably gonna not use this, at least not on this build. Maybe we could use it for the mower. Yeah. Maybe. Probably be better than the current s steering situation on the mower. Probably a little bit better, yeah. <laughs> we'll use it on something, that's for sure. I've been fiddling with this for quite a while and I finally found the least bump steer position for this tie rod to be in. That's also a position that's usable for the um, steering. and in the whole nine and a half inches of travel that we have here, it's just a tiny bit of toe in at the top. It's towed in to start with, just because that's where it's sitting, but just toes in a little bit at the very top of the travel. But we might not even be able to get all of that travel anyway, so. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty close to zero bump steer. These are some steering arms from the old Polaris uh, Predator 500, and I'm not gonna use any of the arms, but I took the bearings out of one of them and they fit over this bolt with a little bit of expansion on the inside. And uh, so now that's going to be the steering pivot is the same as the suspension pivot. Um, so now I just need to make some little uh, sleeves in the lathe that fit nice and snug over those bearings. And then I can weld to those sleeves and make my steering arm come up exactly as high as that and then figure out where it's going to be pushed on by the other thing and you know, figure all that out. But the cool part is it just goes right over this pivot. And so you just take the bolt out and then lift it off and take it all apart. But multi-purpose. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, no new mounts required. sleeves done and now we have uh, steering pivot bearings that I can weld to the sleeves so now I just have to figure out how far 
this way and then which way to have this go and then make up some fancy pivot brackets. temporary but we have the main portion of steering yeah and um, the angle is pretty much symmetrical left to right inside to outside so not a lot of Ackerman going on um, but it's really just you know <laughs> the best we can hope for with what we're working with um, which is no space at all. This angle here isn't ideal, having this tie rod come down at that much of an angle, but it's really the only way to go unless I wanna make it way more complicated. We have Cinderella right here to compare to, and I turned it all the way, and this does end up with slightly tighter angle of steering, so I think it'll work. Obviously all of these are just like temporary tie rods from whatever the heck we had laying around. I could have made the bottom piece go straight across, but that would have looked boring. So I put a bend in each end of it, and uh, plus that gets it down a little bit lower. Well, the uh, front chassis plate is coming together. Got the two sides on and the bottom. These are all very small pieces, but the notches on them are rather difficult. Uh, like this one, for example. The back side of the notches is gonna to have to be a little loose and I'll just fill it in afterward because that's the only way to physically get it in. But this notch turned out about as good as you could imagine on the front side. up this beautiful X piece on the front. I think it came out pretty good. And uh, maybe, maybe just a little bit strong. Probably stronger than necessary, but that's what you want. And it has clearance for all the steering as soon as we get our actual tie rods. One of the next things we need to do is figure out 
where the shocks are gonna mount. And these are not the shocks we're gonna use. These are just ones we had to, you know, kind of mock it up. So we need to lift it up and figure out how long of a shock we need and how much travel we want it to have so we can get some shocks on the way. these uh, steering arms all tacked together. Um, I'm gonna pop the bearings out and then I'll TIG weld them together. But I uh, found a little bit of an error, so I corrected it on this one before I tacked it. This one, now that I've got it off, I'll cut it off. So I made clearance for the steering to clear the, uh, the swing arm here, but I made it with it at maximum down travel, so when it travels up, there's no clearance for it to steer out. So. That's why this one's chopped out into the dimple, which it's more than strong enough still. So I'll just chop this one out the same way and then we'll be fine. got the front half of the steering all finished aside from we need some new tie rods which are on the way um, and got this all back together welded up looking good so now it's time to start thinking about the other half of the steering system so we went ahead and ordered this from eBay which is the whole steering assembly from Polaris Razor um, and really all we need is the column here the bearings and a couple of u-joints but the whole setup was only like $60 which would have spent more than that on just some u-joints and shafts and stuff so we may not end up using this steering wheel in the end but we can use it to start with and it'll be really easy to swap it out for a different one and all the parts are good parts easy to get a hold of, easy to replace. We'll have to adapt to these splines because, you know, obviously we don't have a shaft that these go to. But, um, yeah, that'll be the plan. <laughs> shaft here that I made yesterday. It goes through here. It has splines on the back for this to go to. Uh, but we lost a bunch of footage from yesterday. And when I say yesterday, we're posting this video today. If you're watching it on the day that it was posted, <laughs> yeah. this is when we're filming this. <laughs> and I accidentally deleted all that footage last night, so. 
Yeah. <laughs> so luckily we got all the time lapses, just not all the me explaining things. So yeah. that's easy enough to do. Anyway, so now I'll show you how I made this shaft, but um, basically it's just got these two bearings on it. So this one on this end right next to the um, U-joint to hold it nice and stable. And then this one at the end to hold that end. And um, then I'll just cut it to length wherever I need it here and weld um, a steering arm essentially like that on the end of it wherever we need it. And then I just have to make some housings for these bearings. Definitely the best splines we've made yet. And this whole shaft is just one inch tubing turned down a tiny bit to fit this bearing with this little piece here is welded into the end and has the sleeve for this bearing on it. So I'll show you how we made it. This is the cool part. This is the stuff I'm bummed I lost. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was fun. I, uh, I came up with some new um, new ways of making splines. I broke some stuff, but overall it was a success. To mark the splines, instead of measuring and doing all the angle rotations like I did before, I came up with a much simpler way. And I just stuck the end of the shaft onto the U-joint here, or onto the splined end. I just set it in there, held it in place, and whacked it with a hammer, which left a mark from each of the spline teeth there on the end of it. So then I just had, I had all those marks exactly where I needed them. I took a tool here and sharpened it to roughly the angle of the splines, but instead of putting it the normal way for cutting with rotation, I put it in sideways like this. I had this aligned with one of the splines, and then I was using this traverse crank moves this thing back and forth and just cutting a tiny bit at a time manually and then running it back and taking a little bit at a time more. But I was using this crank and then I broke it because it's not really designed for that much force. It's really just designed to run it back and forth. Here's the part that broke. We've ordered a new part already um, to replace this. Luckily they're available. Uh, but yeah, this is all just really weak, flimsy um, cast metal, so it just shattered. And then I had to come up with a new way of doing it, which was with this. And of course, that's much, much slower and very uh, hard on the hands. So I was doing that for quite a while, and then I came up with a revolution. We're calling this North Idaho Spline Cutter version 2.5. <laughs> so. This made it a lot easier. So I just run it back with the drill, tighten it in. Then you got a powered spline cutter. Yeah, and it worked incredibly well. So uh, in the future, when I need to cut splines, I have a way to do it. It takes a long time, but it's quite accurate as long as your metal's not hardened, in which case it would be very, very, very slow. This is just, you know, one little tiny pass at a time, carving out a tiny bit of material. And they all turned out pretty consistent. And, more importantly, it works. And something else we left out on the deleted footage is we got new beanies. Ethan's oh, wearing one. Yeah. <laughs> we got beanies. Or, They're... if you're from the Great White North, a toque. Yes. <laughs> And they're laser engraved, and they're right not here. they're not real leather, so no yeah. cows were harmed. No cows were harmed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're they're engraved and stitched right here in North Idaho, and uh, shipped out of North Idaho if you order one. Boom. <laughs> they're very cozy. Um, we've worn a lot of beanies, and these ones are they're I think they're ideal. They're not too tight for people with large heads, but snug and cozy, nice and warm. Sorry, we're rushing right now, guys. I'm about to run to the coffee shop, finish editing this, and try to get it uploaded by noon. But <laughs> yeah. it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so here's an inside look at what happens when uh, when we lose footage. Again, it's a little sloppy right now because um, we're just dealing with old, worn-out parts. We have all the new 
hind joints and tie rods on the way. Oh, speaking of which, that one just popped out. We, uh, what are we into this? 21 days now? This, today yeah. would be day 21. Yep. I think on the Camaro, day 21 was like essentially finished. Yeah. That gives you an idea <laughs> of how much. Granted, a lot of these days, there was probably five or six days at least of me just like actually doing nothing and just staring at it and rearranging parts mm -hmm. to figure out how it was going to work, which gives you an idea of how much more complex it is than anything else. In oh, case yeah. you didn't already know. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole different ball game. But it's going to be so worth it. And everything on this is just so much better than anything else we've done. Like Cinderella has turned out really good now. Like everything's really good about it. But like the first time we built it, everything sucked. <laughs> we had, we rebuilt and rebuilt everything. It's going to be so sick. And if you miss Wednesday's video, this is a completely different ball game than the Camaro on tracks. Oh yeah. This is hardcore. <laughs> so go check that so out. So much better. That'll be in the description too. And very soon we're gonna take it out into the mountains and actually go shred. Mm -hmm. Just around the yard.